It's the 45 Show, the Steve Probst 45 Show, out of the studios of WPMD.org, Cerritos College, Norwalk, California. Welcome to the Steve Probst 45 Show. Here we go. the flamingos on if i can't have you and before that it was slowly go out of your mind by the jake porter orchestra That was a major worldwide hit by the group The Flamingos, and it's my pleasure to bring on to the Steve Probst 45 show from uh, The Flamingos, Terry Johnson. Hi, Steve. Hi, how are you, and where do we find you on this particular interview? Where are you at? Uh, well, I'm in the studio here in Florida. Oh, oh in Florida. Uh, we're, we're, we're mixing our the Christmas song, which is going to be, I'm going to send you a copy of it. I want to have it out by Thanksgiving. Okay. Fabulous sound. Okay. Now, on no, uh, Nobody Loves Me Like You, um, by right or credit, it's uh, attributed to Sam Cooke. Is, uh, That's that, right. How'd he get it to you? What happened there? Uh, well, we're friends. We're friends. And uh, everybody wanted to write for us when we got really big. Oh, so man. Sam and I, were, we were always palling around together. He said, you know, I'm going to write you guys a song. I said, you don't need to write us a song. I said, wait a minute. Yes, you write us a song because I love Sam Cooke's style. Good choice, so, good uh, choice. <laughs> yeah, so it, t- it took him about six weeks. Every time I bumped him to him, he, d- he didn't have it ready. Uh-huh. And then he finally, we were at the Chicago Theater, at the, the Regal Theater, I'm sorry, in Chicago. And he came, he said, give me a guitar. He took my guitar and he played it. 
Oh, my darling, I just love you so. Uh. There's one thing that I want you to know. No one can love me like you. I know, I know that no one. You know, in his style. And I loved it. I fell in love with it. And I took it to George Gold, the president of N Records. And George said, it's nice, but we can't do it like that. I said, why? I love it. He said, because there's only one Sam Cooke. Mm-hmm. So he said, we, I, I, he said, I think I want to record it fast. I said, fast? Don't kill the song, George. He said, no, we, you know, I, 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 I can't hear it slow like that, but I think we can put a nice little, like, a shout feeling to it, uh, mm-hmm. up, up tempo. I said, well, you're the boss. So uh, he ter- recorded it fast. Terry, I got to tell you, George was right. You he was got, right. He yeah, was. you guys kicked that song. I'll tell you something. That was uh, thank you. Our, yeah, and the strings, all the strings going on. You, you sort of brought that to uh, R and B, and if you don't mind the term doo wop, you, you uh, kicked in the strings part too, right? Your, your right. group did. Who, who were generally on the strings? Was that some symphony orchestra or studio guys? Or? Yeah, we had an orchestra from uh, from New York. Really. We recorded at the Bell uh, Bell Sound Studios. Yeah, no, we had no. The, which uh, symphony the, was it? Oh man, I can't. I'm okay. not gonna lie to you. I can't remember. <laughs> I was a kid. Who was on guitar? Was that you on guitar on that part? That's me on guitar. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a nice little thing. So here you're playing with the symphony orchestra on guitar, R and B guitar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when, when when did you join the? Um, was was the group with Decca when you uh, no, joined the no. Flamingos? They they had just left Chess. When oh. I joined, okay. and uh, the song that they had out when I got with them was "Will I Be Crying?" Right. And uh, they had just did that uh, uh, the Alan Freed movie, uh, "Rock, Rock, Rock." I got with them, and we rehearsed and did a few jobs together. And I started giving them my style because they they recruited me for my style of music because I had my group called the Baltimore Whispers. Right. 1955. We we had had "Are You Sorry" and "Full Heart." And they heard it, and then that's when they recruited me to help join them to change this style, style so we could get maybe more into the pop market. Mm-hmm. It worked, so didn't it? That's how it happened. Oh, it worked. It definitely did. <laughs> what was the first record you were on with the Flamingos when you joined the group? The Ladder of Love. Okay. And all of the Decca songs. Now, matter of fact, I, I arranged the Ladder of Love, but uh, the company took our backgrounds out. You know, whenever a doo-wop group uh, signs with a major label, it seems like uh, the major label doesn't know how to handle the doo-wop group. Is that what happened in your case? I mean, Decca was well, huge. Well, I can't use the word doo-wop okay. because there was there was no such thing as doo-wop in those days. It was called R and B, rhythm and blues. Okay. Yeah. Fair and, enough. Uh, and the white market was pop, popular music. But so. the question was, do you think that? Uh, Decca didn't know how to market. Uh, was the distribution thing wrong? Well, I mean, well that, no, that's not true. Uh, you see, what what happened to that song is Nate Nelson was still signed with Chess Records because Decca had a big, lavish uh, DJ party, and I mean it was a, it was it was huge in California, and then we had we had him in about four different major cities. So Decca was putting the money out, but Nate was still signed with Chess Records in Chicago. And Lenny Chess got with Decca and said, I've got him on the contract, and if you do anything with it, I'm going to sue your drawers off. Mm. And so they they backed up, and we were expecting for Decca to fight for us. Like, well, you know, then buy Nate, buy his, buy his contract out. Uh-huh. And Decca didn't do it. They, they just let it sit there and die. So we wanted a release. Because we said, well, if you're not going to be in our corner, then why should we be with you? And so we had to wait until Nate's contract had run out, which was about four months more that was left on the contract. And so, so we left Becca and we went to New York and ran into Richard Barrett, who got us with N Records. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, but but first of all, do you think Decca had in mind uh, pitting you against the platters and trying to get some of that success? Uh, no, so- no, Decca had no idea. That oh. was... Uh, that was George Goldman's idea. When we got to N Records, mm-hmm. George wanted us to follow into the Platters style because the Platters, they were the biggest thing that was happening.